Hi, I'm Jeremy Sutton, and I'm sitting here in my studio in San Francisco. I've been using Painter for about 20 years, and I've been making art since I was about three years old, and uh, so for about over 40 years, and uh, I've been using traditional media right up until I started using digital paint in the early 90s. My background actually combines science and art. I did a physics degree at Oxford University and studied at the Ruskin School of Drawing and Fine Art at the university while I was there. So my life has actually uh, had both the sciences and the arts, although I've been a full-time artist for the last 17 years. Recently, the de Young and the Legion of Honor Museums here in San Francisco uh, hired me to portray the artists Edgar Degas and Vincent van Gogh. I did live painting in situ in the museums before audiences in celebration of their Impressionist and Post-Impressionist exhibitions. I was very excited to be selected as one of the artists uh, to paint the large hearts that get put around the city by the San Francisco General Hospital Foundation. And my heart, classic San Francisco, is situated in a prime spot on Union Square uh, for this summer. So if you're in San Francisco, do take a look. If you look through my art, you might notice quite a lot of paintings around the theme of dance and music. And this actually reflects one of the passions in my life besides painting and drawing, and that is dance. I am a very, very keen swing dancer and have been swing dancing most of my life and uh, that also reflects itself in the way that I paint. Welcome to my workspace in Painter 12. It is called Portrait and Collage. When you see the welcome screen, you can select it from the pop-up menu there, and there's a Get Workspaces link that allows you to go and get it from the Corel.com website. Um, also, before we move on from this welcome screen, I just want to point out the beautiful artwork of my friend Ad van Bokhoven, who's a marvelous artist in the Netherlands. When you're in Painter 12 itself, you can also choose the workspace by going to Window Workspace and going down to Portrait and Collage. When you first open my workspace, you're going to get an array of palettes um, distributed across your screen. And to help you sort out uh, an arrangement that's going to work well for you, I would recommend that you find out what your screen resolution is, and then after that, go to Window Arrange Palettes and select the resolution that is appropriate to you. And um, stick with the all-purpose arrangement of palettes. That's going to give you the most flexibility. For instance, I'm on a 1280 pixel wide by 800 pixel high screen, and so I'm using the Jeremy Sutton all-purpose palette arrangement that's for 1280 at by 800, and I'm right-handed, so I'm using the right-handed version. Let's take a quick tour of some of the things I've customized in my workspace. And I'm going to start off with the Painter 12 Preferences General. And I've unchecked the Create Backup on Save uh, simply because of the way that I uh, work uh, in saving versions as I go. I, that's redundant for me. I also do Save As rather than Save. Go into the Canvas menu, down to Color Management Settings. Um, what I've uh, done in my uh, workspace setup that I use myself is made the default RGB profile Adobe RGB 1998. Now you may find when you look at this that it's the sRGB setting. Um, I would recommend uh, in order for things to look consistent with Photoshop, Adobe RGB 1998. Going round uh, to the Navigator, I love the Navigator, and so I keep that um, visible. And so what that means is that as I zoom in on an image, you'll see that that red box actually shows us exactly where we are, and I can even drag it around in the red box. Um, the other thing I love here is that you've got the slider 
for the magnification there uh, in the navigator panel. Um, I've got the uh, color wheel below that, the, the colors palette. And um, this, by the way, if you have more space, you can drag out and make uh, really large. Obviously, when you're working with a, a small um, resolution, uh, as I am for recording this video, uh, that's not really such a practical option. Um, beneath that, I have my layers palette. And you'll see here that um, in situations where we're working with layers, um, that that's very, very useful to have visible. Also, um, I always like to have it uh, visible anyway, uh, for since some of the brushes create uh, layers like the liquid ink and the watercolor, create layers in the layers list. It's always good to keep an eye on that. Um, I really like to be able to adjust to see the preview of the brush size. Uh, they call it dab profile here. And also to adjust that size using the slider here. Um, so this is something that I have set up in my um, workspace. Down here we see the, uh, these colors across the bottom of my workspace. And what I'm actually using is simply the um, a range of colors at the top of the mixer and I just find that you know it's always handy to have that sitting there so you can go in and pick those colors when you need them then the uh, sort of sort of core of my workspace is the Jeremy Sutton shortcuts and by any chance if you don't see this um, you can always get hold of it and I'll just make it disappear you can always get hold of it by going to Window Custom Palette Jeremy Sutton Shortcuts. And you may have to just drag it out on the corner there. There we go. And uh, what we're going to see in a moment is in my workflow how all these shortcuts for commands, as well as these shortcuts for some of my favorite brushes, um, uh, come in very, very handy in terms of efficient um, process when I'm painting. We've got uh, some media selector um, libraries here available. Um, the clone source, uh, we'll be looking at that in my workflow section of this video. Color variability, I've actually brought this out specially um, because I think this is such a powerful part of Painter uh, when you're wanting to uh, really generate uh, nice variability and organic uh, richness to your paintings. So I really encourage you to use the color variability panel. Um, this uh, tools um, box, I tend to just move around so it's out of the way. I like to see that I do have the brush tool available there, but besides that, I keep it pretty much out of the way. And that is the super quick um, clockwise tour of some of the things that are in my workspace. This is my painting, The Chess Player. It's based on a series of photographs I took in the French Quarter in New Orleans. And this is a chess player, uh, Giro, who I had the pleasure of playing with. He, of course, beat me resoundingly. But what I want to show you is uh, the fact that I often use collage techniques to get my initial source image composition. And in this case, if I bring up the layers palette here, you're going to see that this photograph actually is comprised of a number of different photographs. Um, and once I've got all my layers in place, I'm happy with the composition. And uh, I'm just doing a simple copy and paste using layer mask to edit each layer. I'll then use the drop all button on my Jeremy Sutton shortcuts to flatten the image. I might use the equalize button as a shortcut to getting this uh, nice equalize effect which is uh, similar to levels in Photoshop and then I might follow that up with the underpainting shortcut which I then uh, maybe add a little bit of saturation to and at that point I can use my save as button to save a version of this image and the way that I work I do a lot of save as is. I've also included an iterative save for those who actually just want to not be interrupted with renaming files and that automatically adds a sequence 
of numbers at the end. Generally speaking, my workflow is using save as. At this point, I'm going to share with you um, another source image I took, which is actually a detail of a door in New Orleans. And when I do a photo shoot, I'm really often uh, capturing uh, relevant textures uh, I see in the environment. And so in this case, with this texture of the door, I'm going to use some more of my shortcuts here, Jeremy Sutton shortcuts, with an all followed by a copy. And these are just shortcuts for things you can access from other parts of the menus here. And then we're going to um, bring in that um, flattened collage, which has got the saturation added. Um, I've made it a small reference on the upper left. And I'm going to use the clone shortcut that I've put into my um, uh, Jeremy Sutton shortcuts here in order to make a quick clone copy. And we'll just make that a little bit bigger so you can see that better here. And actually, we're going to use my paste shortcut to paste in the um, texture that you just saw and maybe a drop all shortcut to flatten that image. And just to show you um, a further stage, uh, this is uh, done using that technique, a little mixture of the tracing paper with a bit of uh, cloning. What you'll notice is that as you uh, run your cursor across the various brush shortcuts, which I've customized all those little icons to make them a little bit more expressive and also differentiate variants within the same category, um, you'll see uh, the title of the variant and also the, um, uh, the icon come into color. What you'll also see is the way that I've arranged these brushes, essentially um, in the order which I may use them not always the same, but uh, the order I might use them in a painting. Um, starting off with uh, big bold brush strokes, uh, working into texture, maybe uh, adding some more graphic detail, and then ending up with some washes like the broad water brush and diffusing things at the edges. And then, for instance, uh, going into sort of blending and distorting. So here we have the runny brush, and this one is fantastic if you want to sort of just create that runny effect which you see happening here um, in this painting.